In this video, we're going to look at the design of a laser cut tabbed box using Inkscape. Here's the basic layout of the box that we're going to design. By a tabbed box, what I mean is that each of the sides of the box either has a tab or a slot cut into it to facilitate gluing the box together. I think of each of the sides of the box as having some nominal size where we either add a tab or cut a slot. Uh, so for example, the end of the box has a nominal size of 2 inches by 3 inches where we're going to add a tab to it. Uh, the front of the box has a nominal size of 2 inches by 4 inches where we're going to cut a slot uh, into the, uh, into the uh, edge of the box. And the bottom has a nominal size of uh, 3.5 inches by 4 inches, where in all cases we're going to be cutting uh, slots to accept the tabs from the other sides. The top of the box has a size of 3.5 inches by 4 inches. In other words, it's the same size as the bottom of the box, so it will fit on top. And then uh, offset onto the bottom of the top, um, we have another piece um, which is offset in by a quarter inch. Note that that is the thickness that we're assuming of the stock for this design, say quarter inch uh, plywood. Here's the procedure that we'll use in Inkscape to design the box. First we'll set up the page size and grid. Next we'll draw the sides of the box using nominal dimensions and show how we can type in the dimensions rather than drawing them exactly by dragging. Next we'll use the path tools to create the tabs and slots. Specifically we'll use the union tool for tabs and the difference tool for cutting slots. Next, we'll set the line color and thickness for laser cutting. And then finally, uh, we'll save the design as a PDF file. Now in Inkscape, the first thing that we'll do is set up our page size and grid. We'll go to File, Document Properties. Set default units to pixels. I'm sorry, to inches. Again, units to inches. And we'll assume that we're using a 24 inch by 24 inch uh, piece of material, either plywood or cardboard. We've got the page size. Now we'll set up the grid. We'll do a new rectangular grid. Grid units in inches. The spacing X to be a quarter inch, 0.25. Spacing Y, also a quarter inch, and hit return. And then we'll have a grid line um, every four minor units, or a, a major grid line every inch. We'll close that. Now the next thing that we want to do is uh, draw each of the sides of the box according to their nominal sizes. So we'll zoom in a bit since we'll be working in the top right hand, sorry, top left hand corner uh, of the page. And now we'll draw a box side. And we're going to fill it with blue. We won't worry about the color. We can adjust that later for cutting. And we're going to just draw that to be an arbitrary size. And then um, change its width by typing in um, 3 inches by 2 inches uh, for its height. Uh, and now we have that box. Next we'll work on the box side. Um, I'll draw that to size, um, snapping to the grid, which is uh, 4 inches by 2 inches. And then below that I'll draw the box bottom. And I'll draw that to the the right width, but then I'll go in and uh, change the height to be 3.5 inches. Okay, next thing that we're going to do is add the tabs. And as a trick for this, we're going to draw the tabs as little uh, squares and then use the union tool 
um, to, to place them and, and connect them. I'll uh, save, make a little space so I have room for the tabs, zoom in. And, uh, now I'm going to draw a little rectangle that's a half inch by half inch. And this is going to be my uh, prototype for a tab. Right, so I'll select that object. I'm also going to select um, snap bounding box corners because this will be important as I place and move things later so that it conforms to the grid. So I'll select the tab, um, hit copy, and then move my cursor and paste the tab in place. I'll place one on the other side of the uh, box edge. And then finally I'll put some on the, the bottom side of the uh, the, uh, box end as well. All right, so I've located these squares for where my tabs are going to be. Now I'm going to select the box end as well as the tabs, all of those objects, and go to Path Union. And what this will do is merge that all into one object. So I now have a uh, box end uh, complete with tabs. Now we'll do the same thing for the box side. Um, notice that it's only the part of the box side that's going to be attached to the bottom uh, that has uh, tabs. Uh, the parts that will be attached to the box end are going to require slots, which I'll do later. So again, by copying and pasting, we'll put those in place. Once I have my three tabs there, I'll select that whole unit. Again, uh, under Path Union, I'll change that to a single object. And now I can delete that uh, little square that was my prototype tab because I don't need it anymore. Now I'm going to use the Path Difference tool um, to cut the slots using the tabs that I already created, uh, essentially as stampers. So I'm going to move my uh, end out of the way. And first thing I'm going to do is uh, cut the, the slots corresponding to the box ends uh, onto the box side. So I'm going to select my uh, box end, make a copy of it, and then I'm going to fill it in red uh, just to, to designate that this is a, uh, a cutter or a stamper. I'll move that into place against the box side, and then select both the uh, stamper and the box side and go under Path Difference this time, and watch what happens. OK, so it takes the difference of the two objects. Uh, it removes the stamper and leaves the slot behind. I'll do the same thing and uh, make a copy of my box end and position it on the other um, side of the box side. Paint it red, which isn't really important. Just to, uh, I'm just designating it as a stamper. Move it into place. Select both objects, the stamper and the object I want to stamp. And again, go under Path, Difference, um, to cut the slot. All right, so now I have the box side taken care of. Um, what remains is to cut the holes for the box bottom. This is going to be a little bit trickier because it's going to require me to um, either reflect or rotate my stamper. Let's create a little bit of space uh, to do the work. So I'll move the box bottom down. And now I'll make a copy of the box side and turn that into a stamper. Paste the copy. Again, fill it in red just to signify that it's a copy that I don't need that's only being used as a stamper. Then I'll make another copy of that, and I will flip that um, vertically so that I have stampers to use on uh, either side of the bottom. So I'll put the one in place, uh, scroll so I can see what I'm doing, select both the stamper and the box bottom, path, difference, and so I've got one set of slots. 
Now I'll move my other stamper into place. Select both objects. Path difference. Okay, now I have half my slots. Now I need to take care of the slots for the box uh, ends. For that, I'll make a copy of a box end. Paste it into position. Again, paint it red. And now I need to rotate it um, 90 degrees counterclockwise um, so that uh, it's in the right orientation. I'll make a copy of that paste it on the other side of the bottom, and then I'll uh, flip that horizontally so I now have my, uh, my two stampers. Scroll a bit, and then just as I did before, um, I can use those stampers uh, to cut the slots. So I'll move them into position, select, path, difference, and now I have one last, and I'll perform the same operation. And last one, path, difference. And we'll zoom out a bit. Bring my pieces back up into the top left corner. And I'll select the objects and zoom into the selected so I can see better what I have. All right. Now note uh, the box only has one bottom, but it's going to need two ends and uh, as well as uh, two sides. So I'm going to make some uh, copies of the ends and sides and position them to the right of, of what I had. So I'll make a copy and then paste and drag them closer to the top left corner. And now the one thing that I have left to do is to change the fill to none and the uh, edges to red and fix their line width so it's correct for laser cutting. Um, so I'll select all the objects and uh, left click on the little X none box um, which removes the fill and then I will shift click on red which will change um, all of the strokes or, or edges to red. Now I'll go to object, fill in stroke and I'll double check that my red color is correct and then I will uh, change the, the stroke width appropriately. So the red is correct, it's uh, 255 red, zero, and uh, for um, 255 um, opacity, I'll go to stroke style, it's in inches, and I will change it to 0 .001, which is the stroke width that I need for laser cutting. Hit return, and you can see now that the lines are quite faint. That's why I worked with a uh, wider stroke width before, so you could see what was going on. If I go to view and uh, deselect to the grid, uh, you can see that the piece is a little better, but they're still quite faint. I'll save my design as the uh, SVG file so I can work on it later, and now also um, save it as a PDF so that I have that for uh, laser cutting, which I can open with another tool that's connected to the laser cutter. So I'll save that as a PDF save, accept the defaults for the uh, PDF document, and now let's just take a look at the PDF, it's here on my desktop, and there it is.